Hey guys, Shelly here from Whiskey and Sunshine Off Grid. Uh, I have been busy for a few weeks now canning and doing stuff and I don't really do canning videos because I'm kind of new to some of it. I'm trying a lot of new things and I don't feel that I'm in the right position to be teaching you how to do it. But I am finding that it's a lot easier than we think. So I did these seven jars last night of this ugly chicken and um, this beautiful ugly chicken. And I have this one bag left and I have four jars over here. They're all clean, ready to go. I've got two jars over here that I can clean if I need them. Um, not sure if I'll need them or not. Um, my canner's ready. The, uh, some of the bone with meat that I ended up cutting off those, some of the fat, um, skin, everything, I put in a bowl as I cut them up and I've got them in a pot over here uh, on the stove. I'm gonna cook it all down and cook all the meat up and then take it all out. Now I've never canned chicken before, so um, I'm gonna show you what I do and hopefully I don't totally embarrass myself and do it totally wrong. Um, but I've watched a couple different videos. Pratt Family Homestead is one of them. They can everything and um, so I got a lot of information from them. Uh, they recommended, I think it was Sutton Days again. Um, I looked at them and I uh, found some good stuff on canning chicken from them. Um, my home preserving book. So I'll just show you what I do. And uh, if it's the right way, awesome. If it's the wrong way, I'm sorry, but it's working. So I think it's the right way. <laughs> All right, so I'm starting off with clean everything, washed my hands. I've got a, like a serrated kind of cutting knife. I really like this to cut with, it's nice and sharp. I have my chicken in here, and I don't know if you're supposed to, but I rinse it off. Just a quick rinse, there's no scrubbing or anything like that. Now this has a bunch of fat right here, and I can't fit as many chicken in the jar if I if I um, keep that on there so I want to just get the meat in there so I cut it off and save it I have a, jar, a bowl over here and I'm saving it and you gotta find the just the right spot between your drumstick and your thigh and you cut it right off there's there's a spot there that will go right down through really nice and easy all right, and then I'm gonna put it in the jar. I do some upside down and I do some the other way as well. Now this, because I have uh, regular mouth jars, these don't fit as well. So I find out where this big bone is, which I've been pulling out. Uh, some of them I pull out if they come out easy. And I put that in there because that's still got meat on it. And then I cut this bone over here on the side off. Right. So this whole thing here has got meat on it. But I don't want I could put it in there now that it's smaller. But I'm going to take it out and, and cook it off. And then just keep this part. This is a little piece, so I'm going to take that and throw it away. Um, and so here's my my uh, thigh and I'm gonna put it in the other jar. Hopefully you guys can see the jars there. The difference between raw packed and hot packed is you start with a raw pack, you start with raw chicken and a cold canner. None of this is warmed up. With a hot pack, you've gotta warm up your jars, you warm up your canner beforehand um, and you cook your chicken. Yeah, that cuts pretty good. I'm gonna put two down on that and then two up probably. Okay, so now I'm just cleaning up the jars, the outside bottom part. I'm just looking for, you know, any nasties that are on it. I don't want that in my canner because as you're pushing it in on these, these regular mouth, I'm shoving it in there and it's kind of going over the edge and dripping. So I'm trying to just keep it as clean.
clean as possible. And I have a Lysol wipe here and I'm definitely gonna Lysol everything down when I'm done. All right, I have a jug of vinegar. I always stock up on this because it's good for cleaning too, not just for canning and stuff. And I just go around the rim with that. And I also go around the, the, the rimmed part where you would put the um, screw top on. Just kind of do the whole, I do the whole thing, not just the top. And you're also trying to find and make sure that there's nothing there that would um, hinder it from sealing. clean. All right, and here's my, my tops. I'm just going to put those on. You could put these in water and heat them up. They say you don't have to anymore. Um, these are brand new, so. All right, and here's my jar tops. These are not brand new. I've used these a bunch of times. Um, but I put them on finger tight. You also have to make sure you have at least an inch of, of um, space between your food and your top of your jar. I have one of these to tell me that. And you set this on the edge of your jar on the inside here on the top and you put this down. Here, I'll show you. And you put this down and you make sure that your chicken is down enough or whatever you're doing, it's usually an inch. I go by um, where it starts to taper and come back up. That's what I do. And then put these on, finger tight. There we go. And then this is the one I was using. I use a ton of, um, I use a ton of these when I'm canning. I'm always using clean ones, especially with chicken. You wanna make sure that you don't contaminate everything. All right, so there's that one. There's still some pockets in there, but it'll get filled up with juice. Now I didn't put any fluid liquid in here because this is raw packed. This is raw um, chicken, so it has all the juices in there. Um, and so it'll cook in its own juices. So I don't add any. If you were gonna do hot pack, you have to put in your own, whether it be water or whether it be chicken broth or beef broth or whatever you're gonna use. Um, because you've already cooked that out of it. But this way it's still in there and it's gonna come out as it cooks in there and seals up. So that'll work really nicely. Those are all in. And now to get my canner ready. Okay, so I have a couple of inches of water in my canner. It comes up to about here. So all you need is a couple inches when you're pressure canning. I'm gonna put my jars in. Face them out. There we go. They're in there. This is a cold canner right now because I'm raw packing, so everything's cold. Water is room temp. Um, everything is the same. There's no nothing heated here. All right. Turning on the flame. And there it is. So we're gonna put the lid on that. And next to it is all my chicken that I just cut that I don't want to can up. I'm just going to cook it, take the bone off, and maybe freeze the meat or make some soups with it and then can it. I'm not sure exactly. So every time before you start canning, make sure you check your, your rubber on the inside. Make sure it's not uh, rotted or nasty or uh, popping up. It's got to seal. This is what helps it seal. You wanna make sure your hole is um, is clear. And then my little pop top thing here, I wanna make sure that works the way it's supposed to. And I'm gonna set this on. So it's on there. And then you wanna turn this so that it, these line up, let's see. See how that turns, hopefully, you can see that. All right, 
Now I have my weights. You don't put your weights on yet, but these are my weights. Some people have the gauge on the top. I don't have one of those. This represents five pounds for mine. And then I have two of these rings and these represent five pounds each. And here in our area, it's 10 pounds. So um, I got my five pounder and I'll put this on once it starts going, this pops, start steaming, let it go for 10 minutes. But anyway, five pounds, five pounds makes 10 pounds. So you put one ring on and I have the other one I just set aside. So, and that would go on there once that starts cooking. It's gonna take a little while to heat up in there, uh, everything to heat up and get going. But once it does, I'll bring you back and show you what I do next. Okay, hopefully you can see that. We're now boiling, I'm building up the pressure. I've got my weight. And I'm going to my 10 pound weight. And I'm gonna put it on top. That's gonna to make that pop up. Maybe we can see it happen right here. For that to, um, there we go. So it's building up pressure now. We're gonna wait 10 minutes for that to uh, build up its pressure. And then once we do that, we'll start our timer for an hour and 15 minutes for quarts is what it should be. So um, we're gonna wait 10 minutes and get that set. Speaking of chicken cooking, the pieces, the bones, and the excess meat and all that is cooking. I don't know if you can see, but the see the broth in there, all the yellow. It's going to be awesome to can up. But um, I just come in and give it a stir so that it all gets gets cooked evenly if possible. I added a little bit of water at the bottom to get it started, but it's really coming on its own with um, all of this all of this broth. It's a great, great thing. Not to mention all the meat that's going to come off there. As I drain off this uh, chicken broth and get the meat off the ch this chicken, I think about uh, how lucky we've been this year. My dad sent us a bunch of jars and my mom has given me a few jar uh, packs of jars and my sister-in-law has given us some jars and also uh, her and my brother-in-law have given us a bunch of tomatoes and we've been able to make spaghetti sauce and can it up so we've been very fortunate not to mention this chicken that we received we got 10 or five 10 pound packs of this chicken from extended family and uh, we've given two packs away to a family that needed it and um, we're canning up the rest and we are so fortunate to have such wonderful family and friends uh, that have done this for us. A big thank you to all of you. It's all much appreciated. So, uh, I got about four cups of chicken out of that just boiling down the extras that I didn't put in the cans to can. I got about eight cups of um, chicken broth. So I think what I'm gonna do is probably make a soup and use some of the vegetables that I didn't have enough from the garden to can. I have some frozen, and I think what I'll do is just mix all that in with it and make some kind of a soup or a stew or something like that with it. Um, Guys, do it. If you haven't just bought a chicken from the store and processed it, canned it, try it. Just don't be intimidated. It is intimidating, but if I can do it, trust me, you can do it. Um, the Ball Canning Jar book is awesome. Probably most other canning jar books are, or canning books are good as well. Um, it, it really is pretty awesome. So it's been pretty noisy here for about an hour and 15 minutes and I just turned the, um, the canner off 
So now it is done. I just gotta let it cool. Gotta let it cool down. Let that little pin drop. I can take my weights off. Let it cool a little bit longer and then I can take that top off and I will have my um, chicken. But we can't always rely on the government or somebody else to do this for us, guys. Learn how to do it. It's easy. It's a lot of work, yes, but it's because it's the process that you have to go through. Just go one step at a time. Just don't get overwhelmed. Believe me, I'm easy one to get overwhelmed when things get really crazy. You can do it. And if you're interested in some of the stuff that I've done in the kitchen, cooking with hamburger, chicken, garlic, all kinds of stuff, check out this playlist right here. Thanks for watching, guys.